welcome to the Survivor to Thriver show with your transformation guru, Samya Bano. Are you overcoming big challenges in your life? Do you want to transform the world? Is fear holding you back from taking the bold action you need to create massive positive change? If so, Keep listening and transform that fear into freedom. Hey, welcome back to the Survivor to Thriver show. Last episode, we were reflecting on the gift of fear in the context of our fear itself being a great gift, a gift of our imagination to help us consider and prepare for the worst case scenarios in any given situation. And we talked about how it's really important for us to also keep in mind that the gift of fear is not the only gift that is available to us or that is offered to us by our imagination and other aspects of our being. So for example, along with our gift of fear, we have the gift of optimism, which is also offered to us by our imagination. The gift of optimism is grounded in our considerations of the best case scenarios, the best outcomes that might occur in any given situation. And we really need to create a balance in the way that we honor our fear and the way that we honor the gift of optimism. We cannot afford to ignore either. Because if we ignore either one, we're going to end up in trouble. If we ignore our fear, we compromise our safety. If we ignore our optimism, we put too much focus on the fear, then we end up constricting our lives, end up living very, very small. And actually we inhibit our our growth. And if we're not growing, we're dying. If we're not growing, we're dying. So we cannot afford to ignore the gift of optimism, the gift of hope, enthusiasm, and, and positivity any more than we can ignore the gift of our fear. They're both essential. Most people find themselves struggling to create the balance though. How do you create the right balance between honoring your fear and honoring your optimism and hope and so forth? How do you do it? So that is what we are going to reflect on today. I'm reminded of the teachings of one of my coaches And here's a strategy that I learned. So whenever you are going to make a decision, you need to take three kinds of scenarios into consideration. Number one, take into consideration the best case scenario. Secondly, you want to take into consideration the worst case scenarios. And then thirdly, you want to take into consideration the most likely scenario. Now the key here is that when you are considering the most likely scenario, do not let that be an an act of imagination. Your consideration of the most likely scenario needs to be grounded in a logical, rational analysis 
of the best available data. That is, data that is relevant to your circumstance, to your situation. And then it is the analysis, the logical, rational analysis of the data that allows you to moderate and establish the right balance between how far to be guided in your actions by your hope and optimism versus your fear uh, uh, and, and, and the considerations of the worst case scenario based on the fear. Okay, let me give you an example to sort of illustrate this um, idea. So let's say you want to go for a hike and uh, assume that the hike you're planning to go on is a- along a trail that you're not familiar with. You have never been there before. So now, first, you will consider the best case scenario. The best case scenario may uh, be that hey, the difficulty level of the hike will be just right for you. The weather will be perfect weather for hiking purposes for you. Uh, You will have no injuries if you like company. Maybe, you know, um, it's like, okay, I'll have great company, so on and so forth. Now, as you uh, begin to plan your actions, taking into consideration your, your best case scenario, you, there are certain preparation you're going to have to make, right? So for example, you're, uh, if you have the idea that the best hiking weather is a day that it's not rainy, but there's some cloud cover. So, um, and there's a certain um, like amount of light, cool breeze, right? So if, if that is part of what you want or expect uh, for having an ideal hiking experience, well, then you better keep an eye on the on the weather predictions and make sure you don't plan your hike on a day where there's rain predicted. Similarly, once you start to consider the worst case scenarios, it's going to guide your actions for how you can either prevent the worst case scenario in the first place or minimize the impact if they happen. So for example, if you're considering, okay, I might get injured. If you think of the worst case scenario, like really worst case, you'd be so grievously injured that you die. But let's say you're saying, okay, oh gosh, okay, well, there's nothing I can do about that. I mean, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. So there's no way that I can um, prepare for that. Now, if you if you allow, uh, or let's say, let's scale back the, the worst case scenario imagination a little bit just so uh, for the sake of giving you a good example in this case. So let's say your worst case scenario imagination says, oh, you know, you're going to have a really bad fall. Like you're going to get grievously injured. Maybe you won't die, but you'll get grievously injured. And so you start to think about, okay, what can I do uh, if I get grievously injured? What could I do to sort of help myself in that kind of situation? Well, how can I prepare ahead of time? to either uh, prevent that or to have the best possible outcome if that happens. So one of the solutions that might come to mind is, okay, well, um, I certainly shouldn't go to the hike alone, but uh, not only should I not go alone, but I need to go with people 
who have certain kinds of expertise. So maybe I need to go make sure like uh, the, the, the team of people I go with includes some doctors, some paramedics, some expert climbers, uh, and, and uh, I don't know, like other kinds of uh, expertise. So if I have a fall or something like that, I have people who are capable of you know, giving me the medical treatment I need or, um, you know, um, uh, giving me the other kind of, of, of help that I might need in that kind of situation. Now, it's certainly not impossible to make these kinds of arrangements to help you uh, be more safe or as safe as humanly possible going on, on, on a hike in an unknown area especially. But if you, if you allow your, imag- uh, your fear to really take you to the extremes of just how bad things can get and prepare for the absolute worst case scenario, it, it may be just too overwhelming. It's like, oh my God, it's like, uh, how, how uh, am I even going to begin to gather around me like this team of experts or arrange for that chopper or, you know, like uh, make sure that there's like a medical facility uh, really close by and, and things like that. It may just become too much of, of a challenge, too much of a problem, just... Um, and, and, and just discourage you from grow, go, going at all. So, again, it's like, whoa, okay, all right. So let's use our consideration of the facts, our analysis of the facts, of what's the most likely outcome to moderate. So it's like, I'm going to do some preparation against the likelihood uh, or against the possibility of being injured. But I'm not going to drive myself crazy trying to cover all possible um, scenarios. I'm just going to take, make reasonable preparation and do the best I can to cover the most likely scenarios with my preparation. So maybe I won't go alone. I'll, I will go with one or two other people. But I, you know, um, I won't worry about, you know, having those people be expert climbers and expert uh, medical uh, attendants or paramedics and, and things like that. I'll just go with my friends who are reasonably fit and reasonably sensible and reasonably uh, capable. And maybe I'll pack uh, something of a first aid kit so that if we have some relatively minor injuries and so forth, we can give ourselves uh, first aid. Maybe we'll make sure that We have cell phones with us so that we can call in for help if, um, you know, we need more help. So the idea is that you do the best you can with what you have and what you know. And you include in your analysis of, of the data a consideration of what's most likely to happen, right? So you don't drive yourself crazy trying to cover all possibilities, uh, particularly those possibilities that are extremely unlikely. Because when you do a cost-benefit analysis, see, it's, it may just not be worth your time and effort uh, to make preparation to cover the most unlikely possibilities. You know, in those kinds of situations, you may want to tap into your uh, faith and trust in your own ability to overcome whatever challenges come before you 
to to trust enough in in your own resourcefulness that you know what I'm going to make these these uh, reasonable uh, preparations, take these reasonable precautions, and if anything truly unexpected comes up, I will be able to also deal with that in the moment. I will use my resourcefulness, I will use my ingenuity to deal with it when it happens. And in the meanwhile, I will not allow that to keep me stuck where I am. I will keep moving forward. So think about how you can apply this lesson in your life now. And if this is something you find yourself struggling with, please reach out for help and support. And you know that I'm one person you can reach out to. Just go to my website at academyofthriving.com, click on the contact us page, and you'll see how we can connect. By the way, I told you in my last show also that for a limited time, I'm opening up the opportunity for you to join me live on my Ruthless Compassion mentoring calls. On these mentoring calls, I give you the opportunity to get on the hot seat, which means that you get the opportunity to tell me what Ever challenge or fear you're dealing with that's keeping you stuck in a negative place and right there and then on the call I'm going to help you facilitate uh, for you certain processes uh, certain exercises that will allow you to break through your challenge break through whatever the fear is right there and then on the call. And in most cases, as I shared with you, it only takes me a few minutes with whoever is on the hot seat to achieve these breakthroughs. If this is something you're interested in, remember, go to my website, academyofthriving.com, click on the contact us page so you can connect with me. And when you connect with me, make sure you let me know you want to get on one of my Ruthless Compassion mentoring calls. And I encourage you to take quick action on this because I do not know for how long I can offer this opportunity. So until next time, I wish you lots of peace and joy.